Today, we travel back in time. Back to the 1950s and 60s, when heavy resistors, giant capacitors, and glowing vacuum tubes shaped the sound of a generation. Every part of this amplifier carries the soul of analog sound. This isn't just a project, it's a story of sound, echoing through time. After completing the full design and layout of my amplifier's printed circuit board, I'm now starting to place each component carefully onto the board. Resistors, capacitors, all finding their place, one by one. Once the soldering is finished, I'll connect the power transformer and the speaker. And then comes the best part, powering it up for the very first time. Let's see how this amplifier performs after all the time and effort put into building it. The microphone input I'm using in this project is a classic socket type from the 1960s and 70s. Back then, almost every microphone used this kind of connector. But today, microphones with this socket are no longer made. It's the perfect choice to capture that true vintage style. The output impedance transformer used in this project must be perfectly matched with the EL84 tube. The primary winding is 7 chyl ohms, and the secondary output is between 4 and 8 ohms. When wiring the transformer, both input and output connections should be tested in both directions because proper negative feedback operation depends on the correct polarity. Today I'm holding a block capacitor from the 1960s. It's labeled 40 microfarads, 40 microfarads, and 20 microfarads, 350 volts. After more than 60 years, this piece has still not lost its capacity. It truly shows how well things were made back then, and how strong the engineering of that era really was. In this project, I'm using a classic 1 Magohm potentiometer for volume control. Unlike today's PCB mounted types, this one is an old style wire connected model, just like those from the 1960s and 70s. 
It takes a bit more effort to wire it up, but the result is absolutely worth it for that authentic analog feel. In this build, I used a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor in the feedback loop. If you'd like to shape the tone, making it either brighter or with more bass, you can remove the jumper wire and experiment with different resistor or capacitor values in the feedback path. The amplifier is now fully ready. I've checked every connection from the input stage to the output section. Now I'm connecting an MP3 player to the AUX input. The EL84 and ECC83 tubes bring that warm, smooth tone transition, the true character of classic analog sound.